starts with visualize. Firstly, you visualize the systems and related details. Then you showcase your old design and you compare it with the new design. The old design, we call it as a baseline design. In other words, that's the reference design that we have in mind or we have in our previous uh, experience. We're trying to go from that design to a more advanced and developed design that's serving new properties and new features for the system. More detailing for complex assemblies is needed. While you're doing your visualization, you need to make sure all your assemblies are accurately visualized, having all kind of uh, engineering concepts like exploded views, cross sections as needed. Each case is different than the other. It's depending on what is the message, what is the story you're trying to tell to your design review experts and uh, uh, your meeting members that will review those DRBFM documents. Make sure everything is clear, especially for complex, complex assemblies. You need to make sure all the hidden parts are showed and you are telling the story in a clear way and able to deliver your message. Why do you think this part is working this way and why you have a concern for that part or that assembly and so on. Then you include all the surrounding parts like the system subcomponents. So if you have a certain part that you are studying DRBFM4 right now, but that's a part of another system, then you want to make sure to include that other system. Not necessarily you have all the details about the other system, but you should be able to include that, oh, this, this part is located as a part of this assembly, and this assembly is part of this system, this system is interacting with uh, the neighboring system, and so on. Again, we will have all these details in as clear as possible as moving forward with, the, with more visuals. We'll try to, to have an examples, uh, an example and parts. Try to see how do you build your first DRBFM sheet uh, in a straightforward way. Then you need to include the direct and indirect changes and how systems are interacting with each other. So starting with the baseline design and new design, let's say you have a vehicle, that vehicle uh, as a system have a certain subsystem called a transmission that's delivering the force coming out of the engine so currently you have your baseline design as automatic transmission like you've been using automatic transmission in your vehicle production lines uh, for 10 years and now suddenly you decide okay i want to go for cvt because the customers are asking me to have a more quiet ride and all those engineering details so that's your baseline design you start with that and you compare it with your new design that you're proposing in this way you have a continuous variable timing transmission which is known as the cvt then you want to tell why you're doing that you can have like um, you can start with the full picture same as what we're doing here then you probably need to do exploded view for the old design but more probably we can ignore that step but you need to do exploded view for the new design to be able to call out components and discuss about the components and uh, show up any kind of concern that you may have uh, with the new design uh, compared to the other design fitting that new design in the system will have certain concerns that need to be uh, resolved using the drbfm process secondly you will go with the hierarchy diagram so after you finished your visualization and you break down all the com components and subcomponents and you give them numbers as we discussed before and you give them a kind of tags that you can refer to now you create your hierarchy diagram your hierarchy diagram is like a top-down process you are starting with your uh, big assembly or big system then you go to subsystems parts and subcomponents and so on so firstly you start with a system let's say here we have a system a that system a have assembly parts let's say a1 that's what you call your assembly then um, a1 have um, a1 to 2 as a sub assembly parts and so on then you have your individual specific part that you gave already a name then your reference from the exploded view then the list of components for that uh, part if it have subparts or a certain detailed components inside of it then you list them here as well then you say what category is that then you will tell what is the change what did you did this part get changed inside that new assembly 
compared to the baseline design or the previous assembly then you would list inside this box what happened to that specific part and you go next system or maybe the the next assembly part and the third assembly part fourth assembly part of the same system then you go to sub assembly parts probably a1 will go a12 a13 a14 a15 etc etc so it will be a big list for you either in excel sheet or wh whatever software you're using in order to list uh, that hierarchy diagram it's very important to list all the components especially the components that are uh, part of the change so need to be listed here uh, to be able to identify concern if you miss a component you will not be able to identify any concern related to that component because what you see is what you get like whatever in this list whatever in the drawings is what you get so if you don't if you miss it here you will miss it at all and you will not be able to study uh, the effect of that part on the overall system so it's very important to make sure that your hierarchy diagram have all the components in it then you have the change list now as we said you have a system assembly sub assembly so this is like a completion for what we did uh, in the hierarchy diagram uh, then you have category changes so you have your baseline and the new design you try to put drawings and some dimensions in here uh, to be able to tell what's the difference between the baseline design and the new design and you move forward with the list until you complete so this way you can catch all the changes happened and why it happened then you have the function list function list again you have system assembly parts of assembly so you copy those from the previous um, sheets now you can say what is the function of that specific assembly what's the function of that specific part and is there any additional functions that you want to list then you want to list them in here to be able to understand exactly what each part is doing in the bigger picture of the assembly or the bigger picture of the system. So the function list help you listing all the function at system level and then you can break it down all the way to parts level and components level. Then you include the design characteristics uh, whenever possible and you need to consider that the system and the parts uh, are being considered at all the phases of the product life then you will apply the functions diagram to organize concerns based on the changes in the change matrix for functions list you need to understand the functions to identify the potential failures so it's important to know which part is doing what so this is why in drbfm now it's 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 a major drbfm document but drbfm process has been split between teams like electrical team would have their own drbfm called electrical drbfm then mechanical team would have mechanical drbfm design team have design drbfm software team have software drbfm so that they are the one the experts they are the one who know what are the functionality of each part or of each certain component and how does it play a role in the system so you need whoever is writing the drbfm for a certain category he need to understand the functions so that he can predict and identify the failure uh, that's potential in the future and experience is very important somebody who's having a practical experience and previous experience about these functions so that he can put predictions predictions are hard to get unless you have the right experience they need to define the functions and purposes of each component in the system and uh, probably need to ask through the team members to, to get all the information. So I can say it's a time consuming process, but it's uh, helpful and the outcomes worth it. Then you include the part interaction with the surrounding parts as well. That's depending on the experience of the person who's putting that input. So it's important to choose the right members to lead the process of DRBFM during that team and during that organization. 